for me to transcribe when I can like see your lips. Because right, you're right. talking in English and I, I can never understand what the English people are saying. <laughs> so I have to like watch the thing in the lips. You've been doing a few interviews lately. I've seen like I've done, I've done a few, not many, but and then just a couple I did about four. But no, it's weird because I did a whole day, like a whole day of press in America one day for that film thing. Oh right, right, right. So that's what, so that's what that like filter thing was. Yeah. Did you see? Have you seen that yet? Yeah, it's like I should have saw it. You know, yeah, there's like the filter thing. What else did you see that day? There was like a, something over here. What was that? Forget now. Uh, I can't remember though. Uncut or something maybe. Oh yeah, it was a. Oh, I didn't even know about that. I just came one out. One of those. One of those. Uh, like, yeah, that was. That didn't look like that. It was an interview. It just looked like a more like a journalist yeah. kind of like slant on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was. Any other? I got three questions. Yeah. No. Um. So where's is the studio like uh, is it like separate from your house? Or yeah. So it's in a different part of town? It's in Camden. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah it's just it's like a space with a big box. You have it have a little load of space in it already yeah. and I was like, yeah, that seems like a good place. That's cool. What, what, what kind of stuff you got in there? Like what kind of board and stuff? Um it's, a, it's called a DDA. Okay. Um and it's an old English kind of desk. Yeah. Really want, but, um, it's all right. It's very, very clean because it pop out all the chat like if you don't use your key or, or even auxiliaries it, it's all yeah. relays. Oh right. As opposed to like the cell yeah. it's all everything on. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And that so that you're doing that band, how long have you been doing that beating reserve? Uh on and off since about July. And how how did you how did you like run into the Gmail's guys? Yeah, they the they built the studio uh, pretty much. So what was the, the deal like it was kind of like a big Help you help build the studio. I did that last time, uh, last year. I went an EP with them. Oh, right. and that was part of the deal. It was like, yeah, I'll give you some studio time. Did you help build it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is different. So, this is like an album. What does that band sound like? What is it? Like? I'm not really familiar. Um, so, um, kind of studious, like, it's cool. like um, not much black side to lines up with. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I describe them. They've got a little bit of you know, 80s matchbox B line design. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got a little bit of that kind of rock and roll thing going on. Yeah. yeah. That's a kind of a rock and roll kind of thing. Psycho kind of yeah. Psycho Billy type. Psycho yeah. Billy. Kind of like the cramps or yeah, something. Yeah, like a little bit of that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And are you recording like your own stuff in there? Oh, yeah, no. No. <coughs> Just when the nearest near thing to do around stuff was always a little bit of music for the film thing. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would appear so. <laughs> um, Place your accent. It's kind of like 
it's, it's not I'm in Dublin after that, Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like yeah. totally Irish. It's, like a, it's just a few things. It's yeah. like a little, like a yeah. Well, that's cool. Where'd you, where'd you, uh, so you lived in, you lived in Queens in New York till you were 10? Or? No, no, I lived in, um, uh, I was born there, but I was like three or four, and then moved to Long Island. Oh, so you like grew up on Long yeah, Island? That's, that's my memory. Right? Oh, wow. That's cool. What, you, but like, what school did you go to and stuff? Do you remember? Yeah, Christ the King. <laughs> Christ the King. Really horrible school. <laughs> Lots of nuns, psychopathic nuns. It made yeah. me so sick that I went to bring me to hospital. <laughs> it's stomach problems. Yeah. It's stomach problems? Well, I was always thrown up. It was oh, I wasn't, I hated school so much, it made me so sick. Were you a good student? No. 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 That's fine. Wow, so, well, so you, that's fine. You grew up on Long Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so did, you, did you do more than high school? Or? No, no, I just did. Oh, I did. I just lived there until I was 10. So then when you were 10, why did you move to Ireland? My parents are good. Oh, your parents? It was like, it was like in 73. And that was when things just got tough in America. I think. Yeah, yeah. It was after the season. It was like, hey, yeah. and we should go back and be close to family and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Five kids. Yeah. Oh, you have five kids? Yeah. Well, are you the younger or the oldest? oldest? You're the oldest. Yeah. Ah. That's funny. So then you live, so then you moved to Dublin? Yeah. So you went to school and stuff there? Yeah. It's good. Basically grew up there, you know, like from 10 to 20. Ah, uh, right. So four hundred years. So you lived there until you were 20? Yeah. When did, how old were you when you like started playing guitar and stuff? 16. 16? Like what? What was it that made you want to play guitar? Um, the kid, this is a kid I knew. But we met him at some karate tournament or something. He was <laughs> form the band. Wait, 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 hold on. Were you at the karate tournament, yeah, or were yeah, you participating yeah. in the karate tournament? Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he's only twelve. And he just, I was fifteen at the time. And he just said he wanted to be in the band. And yeah. So it's gonna be at least it's the same height as me. So it's like, yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And that's how I drew the drummer Colin that wound up being in Oh wow. Uh, Marky Valentine and all that. So um then you you moved out of drama and now I didn't we didn't it took us a month a few months before we figured out the tuning thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cause someone said it's a fifth fret, so I don't know already tape, so we're working on a bar chord, but I'm really out of tune because the last yeah. two strings are totally tuned. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. What, what type of band were you? It's like a punk band. We did our first game with Sex Blue, you know, this cover so it's mm -hmm. between Boy punk and old punk. So that's so that's the kind of music that you were into when you started playing guitar yeah. was just punk rock? Yeah. So the modern moms. Yeah. yeah. So how did you learn to play guitar? Like did you just play along the like punk records or did you take lessons or I just I worked it out pretty much um like I if we don't gigs you know, pretty much all the, everyone seemed to just go like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking there's some kind of position and you know yeah. then just from looking at a few things and somebody showing you a bit of that and, you know. No, all I wanted to do was do that as well. I just yeah. just drumming along and dancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> None of this messy kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Mm -hmm. So, so you were, uh, a, were you? Would you have considered yourself like a punk at that age, or were you just kind of listening to punk rock? Or? Kind of. It's 1980. Yeah. You know, it was kind of. Did you have like a funny haircut or anything? No, or? it was funny, but it wasn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> but, uh, I cut it without looking this way, so it was what uh, one has spiky hair, but it went going up and up and up. <laughs> so bird haircut, you know, kind of raising. That's funny. Were your parents, uh, did they think you were a weirdo? Or? Um, um, yes, but not because of getting into that. I was, I was a weirdo from birth. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So That's I think they were always just pleased when I was into something that's somehow tangible. Like yeah, yeah. Other, yeah. other people did. You know, yeah. It's like, it's sort of normal to me. I was into once it looked like I'm great. <laughs> So then you started, so your punk, what was your punk band, what was the punk band called? Did you guys have a name? Yeah, The Complex. The Complex? How, how, how long has that been around? Just about a year. Yeah. I did it around the time for the gigs. And then were you in like a bunch of other weird new bands? Or did you yeah, just, just this, just, yeah, just uh, got into all that. Got this guy joined, he was a real kind of, no, it's a like, typical early 80s bass player, kind of slightly funky, kind mm -hmm. of. So like kind of post punk kind of like game yeah. four type thing. Yeah, so that then we moved from being like punk band to being much more like um some of the enjoyed vision and season the band sheets and like sure. kind of sort of music. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, what was the band called at that point? Um 
what's it called? A day in the life. No, life in a day. Life in a day. Yeah. Did you get? Did you ever put out any records of any bands before? No, no, no. We just made a tape as our band. Yeah. And then um, gigged around and stuff. Yeah. Just just around in Ireland, or did yeah, you go? Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're a small band. You know, we got to play more than a couple hundred people. Yeah. Then how, so how old were you when um, My Bloody Valentine started? It kind of started around 83, technically, but it was just a loose a, a group of people. We did some gigs to have a lot of people, some were only a three. And, yeah. And, um, and then it kind of existed until, as a kind of loose thing until 84. Yeah. And then we decided to move to Europe. Right. And all the people who weren't going to come to Europe kind of, they were out of the band then. So yeah. it was just left four of us left. Yeah. And uh, that's it, we just went to Europe in 94, just went to Holland, we had one gig over in Holland. Just making loads of phone calls at the public phone box and managed to get this one gig. Where was it? You know what? Tilburg, a place called Tilburg. Yeah. We just arrived there and the guy had been friends with some youth and yeah. he was like, might be cool, he might have someone for us to stay. He was really shocked in the call. He was like, come all the way from Ireland and we don't have any, any sleeping bags or anything. Yeah. And we just went with him out to down in like hostels and stuff and, until we met some squatty kids and, and also a, a house or an ex-biker guy who gave us his house we did some squats and we got a house that we live a place called Gallon and Jesus from and we uh, lived in this house for two months we went to Berlin and we made our first record over there in Berlin yeah yeah what was that one it was this one that's kind of like a gothy ish kind of birthday party yeah birthday party sound yeah. Yeah. were you guys was that an influence the birthday party like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, in Ireland that's what was our big did you ever see the birthday party play? Um, no. 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 I never made it to Ireland. It was a thing about Ireland. It was like hardly anybody played over there. It was yeah. like, like the Ramones finally made it in 79. You know, I think they played once before, but I, I missed it. And so they came once in 79. That was it. The Banshees came in 79. Uh, and then it wasn't until like 1982 that a bunch of other bands came. What was like the best show you saw like in Ireland growing up? It was all the yeah. What year was that? Like what? 79. 79? Yeah. Same question. You saw the power cord. I was all about, I mean, I was just, I didn't know what was going on at the time. And, you know, just all I knew was I came on stage and it was insanely loud and all that was before. And it was all seats and all the seats disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it was just one of those gigs. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was so loud. I had a small being deaf for two days afterwards. <laughs> it's <was> great. <laughs> So, um, um, so then, yeah, so you were saying, uh, so you guys, it was the first record, you recorded it in Berlin, mm -hmm. and then did you exist as a band in Berlin for yeah. a while? Or? Yeah, we lived there for about four months. Yeah. Living in a kind of a commune kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, five pounds each. We just had to pay for food. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just there for. Four months went back home for another month and then went to London because it, we, we tried our best to sort of find a place to stay in Europe. Right. It was really hard to sign on there like at the door. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, because that's where everyone does in this part of the world. Yeah. And about to sign on. Yeah. Um, and then we went to London because of that. You know, because yeah. we knew we could go there and, and pretty much get on the point. Yeah. And, and did you? Yeah. And you guys existed as a band here? Mm -hmm. And then that was it. I mean, you never moved anywhere else yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. When did when did you start singing? Um, in '87, because uh, <coughs> we had we got Belinda, but, um, and then we got these other guys as well. We didn't work out, so we had a gig, and we and it was just like, right, I might as well do it because I was teaching the tunes anyway. Yeah. And uh, that was it. I was sort of forced to. Was it? Was there like a? Was the kind of stylistic change kind of did it have something to do with maybe you singing too? Or? No, because no, I mean when when we first made a record, when it was just the, the, the four of us that made the first record, that was that any good? Mm -hmm. um, we made a couple of records that were weren't good, very good. Right. And it was more. There were one of them was, a, was supposed to be an EP, mm -hmm. and then they wouldn't put out the EP if we didn't make an album. So we borrowed it into a mini album because we were ready. And, right. Yeah. We just bashed out all these tunes, sort of demo like. And I, I think I, I, went, I just got this 12 string, and I was just kind of a yeah. bit too kind of enamored by it, you know. And yeah. Everything was sort of deep. Yeah. Kind of it was the first time I'd sung in the studio as well. Yeah. So it was all, it was kind of like, you know, 
tune. Yeah, I'm trying to get sing and tune kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So this was like some some small indie label you were dealing with that was kind of. Mm. Yeah. And they still own the rights to. No, they. I mean, they pay for the stuff, but because they what they did is they put the mini album and the album together as a as a, a full album in '89. Um, after we did this record in '89, immigration. Um, to sort of capitalize on it. We were even like put it everywhere and it's all over Europe and we didn't know anything about it until some fans came along and asked us on the side of this new record still doesn't have to visualize one. Because it was actually dated as 89. Oh we yeah. We actually conned all the kids into thinking it was a new record. Wow. And um, <coughs> so anyway, what happened was that he wouldn't pay us and it all got really messy and um wound, um, wound up uh, Fatty, actually, you know, him, and um, it's way back in, this is a long time ago, but this is back in 88, but um, him and 14 other guys with, who, were, who were armed and yeah. dangerous arrived at the offices where all the records were stored. There was like 10,000 records still left there, and I, I just knocked on the door, and he sat behind his desk. And was, uh, I, I don't know if this could be worth really <laughs> this, but, it's, but anyway, he just was like, well, you can take what you can, so I just literally went like that. And they just all piled in 14 years, like imagine all that. <laughs> when, you know, ready to go. That's awesome. And the guy just literally went white and he just went, take me. Wow. And it, within about 20 minutes, they got a whole van of records. <laughs> and we just said, leave us alone and we won't, we, we won't be coming back. Wow. What did you do with all those records? What was, what was we kind of lift off them when we, when we finished. Uh, Touring in '92, um, we were dropped, and we had, and we were various majors were trying to sign us, but we wanted to, because we were on tour, we didn't really want to. Well, we just got into our heads that we want to finish our touring, survive somehow. Yeah. And then for that position, we finished all the tour and tried to get a deal. Yeah. You know? And um, it was also worth proving, you know, because we had kind of had a, a badish reputation, you know, for taking a long time in the studio then. Yeah. And um, it was also a way of kind of being, you know, the same. You know, we're actually quite functional. You know, yeah. we don't need anyone's help, and for that position, we want to deal. So when when we finished touring, we, we kind of had all these boxes of records. And we're selling them for seven hundred pounds a box. That's right. You know, to various distributors. You know, yeah. that's how they wind up around the world. But wow. Yeah. But, uh, so we lived off them for about two or three months. So what what major labels were after you guys? Like, were you guys getting wine and dined? Not really. It was funny. It wasn't so much that. It was a funny story, but um, we got dropped at 12, 12 o'clock at night around, I don't know, it was like... What year was that? In maybe 1991. 91 or so. Like, uh, just, we just started touring. Um, and then just when we finished the British tour, then they were like, right, like, right that's it. So, and, um, uh, yeah, I think Alan called me about twelve at night, and I was like, "I said, ah, I just want to. I think, it's, I think it, you know, you need to part ways and all that." I was like, "Yeah, cool." Whatever, because we we'd already not been getting on. You know, we we, we weren't even talking at that point. Right. So it was kind of it felt great actually to start freed up like that. Yeah. And um, and then I went to bed, and I woke up nine hours later, and already eleven rec major record companies. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was that quick. You know, well, it wasn't even, I didn't even get a chance to, all it is, sit and have a little chat this morning, yeah. went to sleep, woke up, it's like, right, here's this list, of, you know, they all want to. So um, did you guys have a manager or anything? Or? Not really, no. So was your sister, job to kind of feel all the... My, my sister basically was our tour manager. Wow. She, she acted pretty much as a manager and that was great. Yeah. But we didn't do anything, we just, a few of them followed us about, you know, right. but we didn't do anything and then until we got to London sort of rented a place and sold those records and did the deal. Yeah. And uh, what did you do so what did you do after that? Um well it took a sort of yeah we got the deal. Uh then I was like right got money. Right. Buy the house. <laughs> yeah. Um build a studio in it. Yeah. Buy the gear. You know, we did all that and we had all that done by we did the deal in October and everything was Found the house, bought it, built a studio in it, and everything by about April. Mm -hmm. like, you know, so it took about six months, I suppose. And um, and then the desk didn't work at all. Ah. It was like some terrible problem with it. It was like one of those new desks by a company, and they had you know they used to shove it out in the market. And yeah. Actually, what it was is all the um, all the pots. It, was, it wasn't just our, our desk. It was even desk that cost hundred grand. It was the, wow. the pots were basically 
it's like a little tracking thing that kind of so it knows where it is electronically. It was it, it was too it was too close, and it, as you moved, it was ripping into it. So say if you used 4K a lot on a on a channel on a, on a say your mid range, you're going 4K a lot. If you do it like 20 times, it, it, it that would disappear. It would, it would it would have eaten it, it would rip off all the tracking stuff it was tracking, and then so it would just go you know 3K nothing. The channel would go dead. Doing wow. a 6K channel comes back. And, that, that, and I can make it go bad only after doing this. I, I just do this about 20 times, like for about like, half a minute, and, and I'd already start cracking up. It took us a year to sort all that out. It was really surreal, you know, being in a situation where we got together. By the, that time, we started going to semi Milltown yeah. already, because we'd been on tour for a while, did, did the deal, did build the studio, and then wound up fighting the record company about the fact that they never wanted us to build the studio. Right. And I said it's dangerous, and you know, we only had we only been we were given like two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, and by the time we built the studio, did everything, we had nothing after six months. Do you know what I mean? We spent yeah. all the money, and we so we're, then we were back to selling equipment and all that rubbish. And yeah, it's just you know, we're destined to be constantly in this kind of self semi self sufficient or semi battle against. Yeah, it's a, but not you know. Anyway, <laughs> and that was that really, and that's all about. Um, about uh, early '94, and then they said, "Right, we'll bail you out, and we'll give you um, a monthly allowance." Yeah. And that went on for a few years. Yeah. And, that, and in that process, during that phase, the band broke up. Proper yeah. like the Colin left and Debbie left. And, yeah. And so, was there ever like an official? Was there ever like an official like a, today? My bloody Valentine broke up. Or was it just kind of like a mm -hmm. slow disintegration type thing? When the other, when the two two of them left in '95, and yeah. uh, then we, we were still. Recording until you know I went off to ninety seven. Yeah. Um, so you know, it was, it, we didn't really think we were finished. Maybe also because in the studio I'd done a lot of it myself. So yeah. It, you know, yeah. and it was a lot of this record, other oh, except for three tracks. Yeah. You know, it was just me and Belinda. So anyway, so yeah. You know, it didn't seem that different. Yeah. Um, and then they pulled the plug finally. Yeah. Because we hit the five hundred thousand pound mark. And right. They were like, that's it. Yeah. You know, when was the last like live show you guys played? Do you remember? Um, I think I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it was in LA. Weirdly enough, oh, yeah. yeah. And I can't remember the name of the venue, but it was in some kind of thousand or two thousand class in place in LA. The Palladium or the Palace? The I, I mean, I, I I know one thing. There's, when you walk in, there's a way of walking into, into the venue, mm -hmm. and you go down a kind of slight slope. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be kind of then around a bit to the back. Of, there's like a car park back there. Huh. I don't know why, but that's all. It's kind of old-fashioned looking venue. It's kind of like a hall with a kind of bar at the back, and it's sort of old looking. Probably Elray. Yeah. You think it's probably Elray? Like probably Elray. Probably, probably thousand capacity, I'd say. Yeah. Maybe about the Elray. Wow, that's interesting. What year would what year would that have been? Ninety-two. Ninety-two. In the summer. Yeah. And we went over and did a tour. I mean, that that was when we were still being self-sufficient and. Yeah. Um, at that point, even the American record company, we were still signed to SAR because we were licensed to them, and they had yeah. this option to, if you could, you know, keep all that if we were ever dropped, and we did. And uh, but we did our tour in, in America with no tour support. We just went over and did it in New York. Wow. Just publishing money that we had. Yeah. yeah. So, what was like? A, I mean, it was a little before my time to see you guys live. But what was a? What was a? What was a My Bloody Valentine live show like? I've heard things from, you know, just punishing. It was loud. Punishing. It was kind of loud. <laughs> yeah, kind of loud. And kind of, sort of, sort, sort of messy. Like, if you ever hear, see like, any live tapes, there's used big gaps in between the songs and yeah. lots of feedback and, yeah. like, lots of, a slight air of confusion and kind of <laughs> starting up and going, like, it'd be really kind of like that and then it would just fall apart for a little while and start up and yeah. fall apart. It's kind of a weird set that way. Yeah. Because it was so loud, it, it kind of worked because people were kind of pleased to have a little breaks. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like they were death death. It, you know, if it was constant, it would have been more oppressive, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I think we were just into the loud thing because it was the, the kind of sound that we had. If it was anything but really loud, you, you wouldn't be able to get the impression. Yeah. You know, because it was kind of guitar sounds and the way it yeah. was balance of everything. Yeah. You know the way some bands you could if the guitars are a bit quiet, you can still if the drums are kinda of loud and the bass is loud, you can hear vocals, it sounds pretty alright. You know, yeah. if the guitars are too quiet, it would just sound wrong. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, like it, on Loveless, it's like the, the mix of it is, it's not like drums. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of guitar with a bit yeah, into it. Exactly. So, yeah. so that's kind of like what it was. Just, like, just, well, you just turn your hand I've, I've heard live tapes that sound really appalling, though. You know, like, yeah. where's my guitar? And I think it's because a lot of them are from PAs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my arms were so loud that they didn't mind. They, they were using the PA. Come, yeah. Well, they just yeah. have a little bit of it. Yeah, exactly. So. That's, that's kind of the shit thing about live things because there's yeah. too many that have gone around, you know, that just miss half of the stuff that was actually happening. Exactly. Yeah. That's funny. But, yeah, it was like, uh, we used to do a song that was um, called You Made Me Realize, and basically, you know, you just have a little bit, 30 second little bit, and kind of got extended to a minute or a few minutes, and, and at, 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 at its peak in, in 92, we were kind of doing up to 40 minutes, you know. Yeah. Now, sort of little bit with just lots of noise and that that would be the bit. Uh, even then um played in Detroit and that that's like Andrew's whole place. Oh right. Uh, and um we even had this sort of sound um, we had these big side fills <coughs> and for the noisy bit we actually got the, the crew to come out and turn the side fills <laughs> and towards the audience and have it come out of that as well. Yeah. Kind of, we did that whole song that we did this roller coaster tour and we we actually had we had the crew um who were just a lot, like a lot of guys who were hired by the PA company. That you know, there's the your crew and then there's the PA crew. Yeah. The PA crew actually um, went on strike because they thought it was appalling that we were we were, we were actually having you know we've got your wedges. Yeah. We'd have wedges facing the audience, as well. <laughs> so nobody could escape it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like from every angle. Cause yeah. th sometimes the people at the front don't get the full impact because they're a bit too close. Yeah, exactly. So we were like, no, nah, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, just found, they just found out, they were like, because there were all these little girls there, and they thought it was just really cruel to have this huge noise in their face, and they were because they were squashed. That's they right. couldn't get away. What was, were people's reactions like? Were they like, were people getting bummed out, or was it like? Usually, uh, pretty much what used to happen would be uh, people would experience a type of sensory deprivation and, um, and they would lose a sense of time and that, that would force them to be in the moment yeah. and because people don't, don't get to experience that that often, that, there'd just be a sense of elation that right. everyone would be really over happy and kind of have this sort of sense of like, wow, that was really weird, I don't know what happened, but I, can't, I suddenly heard the symphony and yeah. everyone, everyone's minds, the, the inner part of their mind would sort, sort of come out because it was a huge lot of noise with lots of texture to it, it allowed people to imagine anything. Yeah. It's like a blank, it was like kind of a hit, like a kind of, um, like when you hypnotize somebody and then nothing become, you know, yeah. in, in your mind literally projects exactly. you know, onto everything. So exactly. and that's what's happening. And that, that's, that was what the, what the whole purpose of it became. And, and always that was a third of the audience largely would find it really shit and, and try and leave or, or go as far away from possible yeah. from the noise as possible and two thirds really liked it. Yeah. And once once we, we we got half the audience that left and I caused because they, they all tried to leave at the same time and caused um, a mild, mild panic because they all got stuck at the door and <laughs> slightly crushed. And then a whole gang of them came back to try and get us because they were so angry that they couldn't get out. So wow. we just had, we could see them coming up the hall, like this sort of like, you know, village mob type thing, you know, kind of shit in their spears. <laughs> Where was that? What country was, was that? It was in Canada. Canada? <laughs> we had so much trouble though, with PA crews, you know. I mean, and also another routine in our gigs, about all of our gigs, the, the, the always, I don't know why they would do this, because even the PA, they'd be hard, but the, the PA crew would always do the tone test thing yeah, after yeah. we finished, because they would be sure that we would sure do the PA. Yeah. We, always when we finish the first thing you hear is do, 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 do. <laughs> all the tones they yeah, do to it. That's fine. Yeah, it's not it's nothing like the sound man just wanting to kick your ass. Do you ever get this sound guy just wanting to beat the shit out of you? Just well we had our own sound person but my sister the, the guy who owns the PA is oh. thinking that you destroyed it. You well you broke the PA. Other than Britain we used to always have to use PAs that were brought in like part of the spec for the yeah. on a ride or whatever, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that so that yeah, all I mean, that was the big thing about having my sister, because she was a girl. It really diffused a lot of violence. I mean, yeah. there was a lot of event times where, where she felt threatened by people because they were, she would often, during that song, she would stand at the sound desk because that would be the song where the sound man would get bombarded by, yeah. by the audience and the crew and the venue owners and all sorts of, so there were 10 people all going, turn it down, turn it down, yeah. this is ridiculous. Because yeah. after about 20 minutes of, <laughs> People were thinking, this is a joke, this is a sick joke, it's not yeah. funny anymore, you know. But as I said, we weren't doing it for that reason, we were doing it because we knew that, that somehow, yeah. uh, somewhere after 
five minutes, some between five and ten minutes. Something happens in twenty minutes. Sorry. Yeah. People pretty much kind of go go off on their own trip. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you ever run into clubs with uh, uh, buying where, with, you know, yeah, you can't go over this certain. Yeah, we'd have the odd trip out. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of tripping, was a, a lot of the audience on s certain drugs? I don't know. Is that like a common? Because this was all like eight, you know, ninety one to not, you know, from more so like eighty eight to ninety two in England, Britain, it was ecstasy was becoming huge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And acid was back on the scene. You know what I mean? It was kind of, but, but, but yeah. So in a way, yeah, in a way. But a lot of the, a lot of our fans were well, in those days were were kind of. Sort of like between 18 and 22, that kind of young, kind of just around, mm -hmm. just out of school or in school or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean, that kind of age. And so they, they weren't really that big into drugs. Yeah. So. Did you see a change in like the audience, like the, the, I don't know what you want to call it, like that early 90s, like mm -hmm. post Nirvana type thing, you know? Well, then, that's the thing, by the time we finished, it was that, that's, that it hadn't really. Like in '92, Nirvana. That's when they yeah. really, really got big. Yeah. But they were still only playing to sort of five thousand people. They yeah. still hadn't really got to that level of where the, all the masses had really kind of went out and started going to gigs or anything. Yeah, yeah. Still, the other world, you know, the kind yeah. of, you know, even you know, the, the, even a band like Nirvana, the biggest gigs were doing were like ten thousand or something. Mm -hmm. You know, we're now bands so that that would be as big as that would be playing to fifty thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see like what's was like the the labels added to that affect the, the attitude of the record label towards you guys? Maybe maybe more like oh well this kind of music can probably kind of sell now. Is that maybe why you think they kept you on longer or kind of yeah. I mean when we um, when we were active like mm -hmm. up until ninety two in Britain and in America like in Britain it was the it was the house thing and then yeah. with. It was that Manchester, Manchester kind of Manchester yeah. scene and Prom Screen had Screamadelica. Yeah. And that pretty much overshadowed us. Do you know what I mean? There was this yeah. whole scene called shoegazing, which you know we were really into. Yeah. That I was in the, it was kinda of like we had this thing tagged to us that was pretty much something that was slightly derogatory. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were Yeah, it's part of that like yeah, what about, just that low fee, like mm, mm. what was me type of thing, yeah. That you well, you guys get did you guys get tagged with that? Well, yeah, um, it was partly just because a lot of those bands were all that they were the kids that used to go and see us, and then yeah. they all four bands, and they were they were openly into us. And, yeah. But the, you know they had their own thing as well going, and, mm -hmm. and what they all had in common was they're all using chorus pedals and flanders. And that's very much not what we were doing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of it was literally that that approach to music that made me do what I was doing. Yeah. Things I found. I hated that. Yeah. You know, well, I don't know, I just didn't like it. Yeah. I couldn't stand the fact that you could hear, kind of hear the pattern of the thing. So, in fact, it wasn't psychedelic, it was the opposite. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was something yeah. that the mind, your mind goes, all right, I know what that's about. Yeah. Okay, next. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, so, it was weird, you know, being linked to something that was, in many ways, the exact opposite of what we were about. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it was, yeah it, was, it, it didn't feel, no, it didn't feel at all like, uh, because after, after, um, the, when we were in the studio, say, in 94, 95, 96, basically it was grunge and rip pop. Yeah. Know, that was the big thing. Yeah. And, and all, all new forms of music like German bass never really got went as big as people thought it would. Right. And it, it became more and more apparent that the idea that a new thing would explode and that we were in the 60s or something, you know, yeah, it yeah. wasn't happening in fact, do you know what I mean, it was more, yeah. more like the 50s, do you know what I mean, where yeah. the initial explosion was big and then just watered down really dramatically, you yeah. know, until another decade. Yeah. Yeah. What, kind of, what kind of music were you putting together around then in the studio in 94, 95, what, what was it sounding like? Kind of like what we did before, yeah. you know, pretty much, but more, um, say, rhythmically, a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and song-wise, a bit more expansive, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, nothing too. That that was the thing. We never really, you know. We only out of that whole period, we only had about five tracks that I reckon will ever come out. Right. You know what I mean? 
So I think it will come out. Do you think it will come out? Yeah, just because of good tunes. Yeah, there's yeah. something about just what, what's good about them is always going to be good. You know, yeah. They, they won't sound old. You know. Yeah. But you had more than five you were working on. We have an um, album. Yeah. You know what I mean, that we're working on, but a lot of it just melodically, I don't. I don't remember it, so that's why I know that it won't come out, because right. if I don't remember it now, you know, I mean, it's not that strong. Yeah. But the ones I remember, I just remember all the time. Like I'm singing the songs, and you know, I think, oh, that song, yeah, where's yeah. that from, you know, I think, oh, it's one of those tunes. Yeah. Do you kind of, do you resent the, like, the press, like, or whoever it would be, even fans, kind of, almost like, Making you out to be the kind of like Brian Wilson, of like you know. That's because of Brian Wilson. It's like they always have to have a, a sub, a sub, a second right version. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, do you resent that? Is that kind of? I mean, it's like. You know, no, because I'm not. Being, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, you know, it, this, it, obviously they have to try. You know, people try and make I mean, it makes it more interesting. You know, yeah. Make up all these kind of things. But <laughs> the, the, this like kind of myth that like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah, we were talking about it earlier that it's, it's like a game of telephone, you know? It's like, well, I heard that mm. they recorded an album, but then he, he went crazy and mm. burned everything and burned mm. the studio to the ground. And, mm. No, I heard that there's like, you know, it's just like yeah. some kind of like, but then people, it almost kind of makes it more endearing to people that way, you know? But like, I don't know, in a lot of ways, it's, I guess it's kind of fun to let people mm. kind of believe what they want to believe, you know? Mm. But. No, I've never burned anything. <laughs> <laughs> Never burned anything. That's right. And then so how uh, how did you end up hooking up with the, s the screen dude and playing with playing with the screen dude? Um, by coincidence, around the same time as um, the record company were trying to you know squeeze me into a position. They actually, thought, what they thought was going to happen was they said, look, we're not giving you money anymore. It's like I was getting five thousand pounds a month. And, you know, when you get when money's just coming in like that, you, you can't live in. La la la, that was in, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and they thought, right, what he's going to do is, and they said, you know, you can, we'll pay for demos, we'll, we'll do all the normal stuff, you know, you can do stuff, but we, we're not just giving you money anymore, it's finished with. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they were like, are you sure you don't want to work in another studio and not at home anymore because maybe you're never going to do it at home? And yeah. So they were, they were trying a little bit, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. the fact of the matter is, that's not how I, I, I made it so clear to them before we signed to them that I'll never work that way. Yeah. That we have all the stuff in the contract that disallowed any of that to ever happen. And they tried it purely from the point of view of, right, you've got no money, so you're going to have to listen to us. Yeah. And then Problem Screaming just asked, I, I'd done a couple of little mixes and they asked me to do one. And um, it just turned out really well. What you know, song was that? Um, it was If They Will Kill. It was a song of the Exterminator record. Yeah. It's it. First time that's just okay. It's yeah. a sort of a t tamed down version. But the, the one on the, the, the original EP mm -hmm. or a single is really good because it starts off really quiet and gets yeah. really loud. And, um, it's just like a little trip thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that, like that, because of doing that, suddenly um, I got, got tons of offers. So it was like, I can get some managers, finally, I've got to give you 20 grand to mix and all yeah. that shit. And I didn't really want to do that. And, but I was lucky enough to be able to have enough people asking me that I would just go, oh, my, you know, friends would ask and we'd go, well, they would be. Or some association, there'd always be some association, a good friend, a good friend with my girlfriend, or you know, yeah, yeah. some some reason. Yeah. And um, anyway, that made so suddenly I went from you know working in the studio, and then I did prom screen thing for nothing, and then didn't think about doing this for money. But so I was getting, getting a couple of thousand pounds every time I did it. And yeah. And I just took it over that way. Those are new means of income. Yeah. 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 But, but again, without trying to make a career out of it. Yeah. Because. You know, when I got on, you know, the management office, I just didn't want to do that, you know, because, I mean, remixing is a really, really bad way to make a living, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's rubbish. Yeah. But it's a great thing to do if you, the way I did it was, all the mixes I did, I would, I would never add stuff, I would just take what was there on the tape and rearrange it. Yeah. So all the, all the, individ the bands all really liked, the record companies would be not, you know, wouldn't really care. Yeah. But the bands would really like them just because they could hear it themselves. Yeah, all the exactly. members could do it, oh, that's my part, going like that. And yeah. it was interesting for them yeah. just to hear their own music turned around that much. As opposed to some kind of like... Well, most people that do remix is just take a few... Well, they, not, there's loads of ways of doing it, yeah. do you know what I mean? But they usually add stuff, you know? And then that's the most prominent thing, so yeah. whatever they add. Yeah. Maybe they use the fucking yeah. kick and snare, yeah. bass line or something. Mm. 
guitar player gets passed out or something. Yeah. Uh, how many how many mixes did you do on that on that exterminator record? Oh, no, only only one. Two mix, one. but I did I did a few other mixes. But you did the yeah, but different mixes, right? Yeah. You did the mix of uh, Accelerate. Accelerate, which is fucking Shoot. brutal as shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How'd you do that mix? Like, what what did you do to fucking? Um, I played. I actually played. I, I, my, the only thing on that song, I think, mm -hmm. that's you know, the drums and my guitar were, were, were put down when the song was being written. Mm -hmm. um, and that all happened because we were supposed to do a jazz session with Ferris Sanders. Oh, wow. And his ma manager um, his basically said, oh, I need four grand um, up front, plus 2,000 for me as well. And, and they'd agreed to a 3,000 or something. The band didn't have it. The band like, oh, we can't do this. Yeah. So just went to the studio and did a, an anti you know, bashed out this punk type thing. And, yeah. Um, but the mix of it, the first mix came out, out really, really lame. Yeah. And I remember putting it down and going, when we put it down, it was this full blast, the speakers were turned out too loud, and it was yeah. just like, yeah. So it was just the side to make a mix that sounded like that. You yeah, know, yeah. The kind of sound you hear when you're actually sitting in front of the speakers and you're, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. It sounds pretty weird on a record if you actually analyze it, but yeah. it sounds kind of right when you play really loud. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's pretty. Fucking crazy, <laughs> crazy mix. Yeah, and then shoot speed kill out of you. Know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's <coughs> maybe like what we were talking about earlier. So you've got so now what's going on is are you, you're communicating with is it is it through Sire or what's going on with the the, the reissues and the remastering and all that stuff. So yeah, sorry, I don't really have anything to do with it, but um, they put out a couple of um, vinyl yeah. things recently. So who are you? Who are you dealing with again? On get Star Will. Yeah. yeah. But um, basically it's Sony. Sony. Yeah. yeah. So did they approach you about? Or they inherited that stuff from Crash yeah. and sold out to them. Right. Right. And uh, took quite a long time to sort it out all out because yeah. it contractually it was all very great. Yeah. So we sorted the whole thing out, and you know, they're going to be the. Um, they'll put that stuff out for seven years. Oh yeah. right. So is it just? Is it how much of the how much of the stuff is coming out? Like all whatever you did while under contract with them, so the everything the EPs, we did, like, everything, yeah. The album, yeah, cool. Yeah. We didn't do all the EPs as a kind of uh, do, a double album thing, right? But, and then then also we'll we'll have them available on like an internet when we we make a website or something and, and just have it so that people don't get into that you know bootlegging or or buying you know spending fifteen pounds on a bloody EP. Yeah, yeah. So just to stop all that stuff, we'll just have them really limitedly available for anyone who actually or really wants to get one. Yeah. They can get one on the internet, you know what I mean? But yeah. in the shops, they'll just be the albums. Yeah. So they're giving you uh, like a budget to, to remaster everything? And everything? I mean, that's what they say. They come up with the target budget, but they have no choice in the matter. Yeah, as exactly. As it turns out, because, you know, I mean, within reason, of course, I suppose I can't spend 10 days per track, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, they, yeah. Do you have like some ideas, other things that have bothered you about it for a long time that, that you want to try and... Well, there isn't anything, it was just cut. Uh, all I do remember, it was cut really fast, did it yeah. in a few, a couple of hours, you know, way faster than a normal album cut. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to do anything to it, you know, like a, I don't know, it was just like, a, you know, cause with all the sound and all that stuff, I didn't really let engineers mess around with it and stuff. Yeah. And, um, because they use just add treble and a bit of compression and yeah. totally fuck up the sound and bring the cymbals out and make this yeah. guitar sit way back when yeah. they shouldn't. But um, we did it, we put a de-esser on it because it was some fundamental like spike occurring somewhere on certain sounds and stuff and really? some of the vocals and stuff. So because that was all over the whole thing, you know what I mean, I yeah. often wonder, what, you know, just because it went through that circuit, yeah. you know, I'd like to hear it not. Yeah, that. exactly. So it's going to be like the original, you know, analog thing, and just do it better, awesome. I suppose. You know, but again, the weird thing is that when I when, when I did the uh, all the EPs, I first did them in '98, remastered them, but mm. I was nearly finished. One song to finish, and then creation stopped. And I, now, now I want to redo it anyway because it was, we just did it to 24 bit '96, right? And we have to archive stuff anyway, so I might as well just re re it as well. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but any other time, it was really hard for me to stick to my original picture, you know, of the sound. Yeah, yeah. Because it would sound so dull. I'd be yeah. like, God, does that little brightness here? Yeah, yeah. And I did sometimes because the tapes would sound really dull compared to the CD. Yeah. So I was like, I don't really have a choice. I've got to EQ it because if I put that out like that, it's going to sound even worse than the yeah. original. But, um, 
but yeah. And then they're, they're gonna be just like slightly variations on the artwork when they're re-released or whatever. Just like no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Just like a couple more. It's slight, but not. It's it's not really. It's they're not re-releases for any other reason, but they're. they're, they're you know, when you make a record, um, if you don't. If you don't actually recut the thing, mm -hmm. then it does deteriorate. Right. You know, like vinyl. So with vinyl, you have to make a new mother. Yeah. You can't just. You really only apparently should be recutting records constantly. Yeah. But the, the people don't do that. But but they just create this like usually a digital master and they and they redo it off that. Yeah. But, but um, even with CDs, it's um. It's it's just that whole thing of like you've got these companies. You know what I mean? You know, the risk is taking, you know, but what I'm saying is that you just don't know whether some idiots just fed something through something or, yeah. you know, like what we found out with, with, with cassettes back in, back when we were making records, we, we went, we decided, because we fought on so bad with Croatia, we actually did the whole um, post-production thing ourselves mm -hmm. and went down to the factories and dealt with all the pressing plants. And, yeah. and um, we found out the cassettes, like you go to this big so-called professional cassette place that does all the major record companies. Yeah. You deliver this with the notes we call 1630s, these digital type big big big, big videotapes and and basically because they didn't have a 1630 player in the cassette manufacturing building, which is a building nearly half the size of this, they would have to they just digitally dub it to a, a DAT player and then use the analog outputs of the DAT, which was which was, which was domestic Sony DTC 1000, um, which was the industry standard in the studios at the time, and that would be fed into the Analog. So basically, they would use these shitty little converters. Yeah. You know I mean, just yeah. for handiness sake. Yeah. You know that, that that kind of shit goes on a lot. You yeah. Know I mean? Where yeah. you just don't know. So basically, the longer records put out, it, it kind of you after ten years, you kind of have to kind of re-evaluate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And exactly. So that's why we're doing it more than, and plus we, we have to archive it all. And yeah. That's the main reason. And the artwork got lost, and all the artwork. If you buy one of these records now in the shop tomorrow, then. It's, it, the artwork could be like a copy of a copy. Right. I mean, it wouldn't even be, it's not a third generation. Right. Because they just scan everything now. Yeah. So, when then, so the, the thing with the, with Glider mm -hmm. is, uh, the, so that's, that one's going to be a little more expanded or? No, that was, the Glider thing was, the, is, it, it's nothing, it didn't mean anything. Yeah. But um, yeah. all of this, there was four tracks that we did mm -hmm. during when we did the Isn't Anything record and, and two tracks that we did. Pre that never came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing just not the worth putting out now. Yeah. But the main reason they didn't come out at the time is they didn't like the vocals. They were like, you know, just trying to sing a bit harder. And I was like, mm, yeah, I like that. Do you know what I mean? So that's good. How did you end up uh, doing the soundtrack for Lost in Translation? How did you hook up with Sophia? Um, it's that guy, Brian Reitzel, the drummer, who's drumming in the air, and he used to be in the Red Cross. He was in LA. And uh, I met him in Japan, the Promise Green, on tour. He was there. It's a festival. And he just, yeah, just said, if you ever want to do something, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And we said, about films, just anything, you know, just do some work together. And then, and then when, he, um, when he was doing the new film, he just, because they were already using stuff in my head, they, um, he just, he just said, yeah, do, would you like to try it? Some music. We did. They just they said we'd like to just do a few bits of music. It was going to be initially just a bit of stuff when they shoot a panel across the city. It was more just the idea of it. And then and they actually gave me the opportunity when I, when I started doing the music to replace a lot of stuff they had. But I couldn't, you know, I found it really, especially because some of it sounded like stuff we had before. And it would be kind of copying somebody who was like what we were like. And I was like, it's all a bit too weird. But, and what they had was really good enough. You know what I mean? It seemed why, why throw some bands song off and thing so I can rip it off, you know, <laughs> you know. But yeah, when we did that once in the film, where there was a song where, where it was just the lyrics were so hard, we, we we basically we copied the basic tempo of it, you know, the kind of basic boom 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 beat. I will tell you this, but, <laughs> but that felt quite weird. You know, what I mean? that's the kind of thing you have to do in films sometimes. Yeah. Just you know, something works really well, but it's not quite right. And you, you think, well, we should just sort of make it seem similar. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was weird. But, uh, yeah. yeah. What, uh, is there anything, what have you been listening to lately? Anything that, uh, I don't know, have you been reading anything? Anything inspiring? Any bands lately? Anything? Mm -hmm. What kind of stuff do you, do you, do you 
listening to? Stuff you've always been listening to, or anything new? Mm. Stuff, <laughs> just stuff you've always been listening to? Yeah. Like what well, um, kind of stuff? I'm, I mean, you know, I hear new stuff all the time, but you know, just bits and pieces. Or you know, in the studio, or the band bringing stuff in. Mm. Always checking out what's new, all the new bands, but yeah. can't say I've really got. I, I, recently, in the past few months, I haven't actually gone out one album and decided yeah. to listen to it. What, what do you think of the, the current musical climate of like bands? Uh, it's inter I mean, it's, it's kind of weird because it's the 80s thing, you yeah. know, especially in America. It's just like, wow, because they didn't have that. But that was that band was in in 81, was so similar. We are, I've got a tape that's insanely similar to some bands like that exist now. Because yeah. they're copying that yeah. era, so it's yeah. just, I'm like, God, you guys don't want to go there. It's, <laughs> it, I know where it leads. <laughs> It doesn't, it depends on this fucking book ends. It goes into a doll by my suit. <laughs> fucking, you know, it just, it just it, it's like, it's cool, but you know what I mean? It's kind of. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, uh, um, like we were saying earlier, so you, you kind of, it's always kind of in the back of your mind, you kind of might get around to doing another. Yeah, I mean, poor Belinda's been waiting literally for years. Oh, uh, yeah. What does she do now? She's got a couple of kids. Yeah. Her boyfriend's, um, he's kind of, he's a, he's a musician. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of keep bit of stuff together, but now she's just really housewife kind of thing. She live in London? Yeah. Still? Yeah. What are, what, are the, what are the other dudes doing? Uh, Calms with Hope Sandoval, kind of, kind of involved with her. He did a solo album with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Debbie. She, she's in the back of snow plow. Kind of, kind of, I don't want to describe them. They're right. <laughs> They're all right. Yeah, right. All camera. <laughs> <laughs> they are all right, though. That's the thing. They're all right. Whatever you say. Yeah. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, and so, so, like we were saying earlier, so everyone was, uh, so when, when that game of telephone happened and the, and the rumors were that, you know, oh, there's going to be a reunion and everything. Yeah. Did, uh, did, uh, was it the kind of thing where maybe they, they had like this day we kind of like, hey, I heard that we're getting. Mm. <laughs> no, she did say, she, she did say that she did heard about it and she was think, thinking, oh, I'm sure they would have mm. let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've never fell out. None of us became enemies or anything. Right. You know, we just kind of, we all, all turned 30 really similar time. Yeah. And just kind of went, we've been together for a long time and come together since we were 14, 15. You know? yeah. Just that thing, you just think, I, I wonder what well, if I did live my life away from these people, how would it be? And, yeah. and yeah. because musically, I'd, I'd really basically also because I, 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 I've become really, um, uh, that's, I don't know what the word is, oh, I'm, it was very difficult to pin me down at that time. Yeah. You know, I was weeks and weeks would go by, and I would just not feel like getting yeah. anything. Yeah. But then go to the engineers would be coming every day. And I not today. You know, it's, it's, I, I took it as far as you can possibly go and just, you know, do what you want. You know, and I, I, I don't know. I, I can't say I regret it, but it doesn't really make music or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of, you know, that's all that happened. We all kind of just became useless with each other. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Do you consider yourself like a more like, um, as guitar player, how, where, how would you rate yourself as a guitar player? Well, if you watch me a lot of the time, I barely even do that. <laughs> like, mm, mm. But, um, I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I've never considered myself much of a guitarist. I, mean, I just said I just wanted to be like Johnny Romano. I just yeah, wanted yeah. to be really good at one thing. And yeah. I, I, I think because of the fact that I was never dexterous and I could never, I didn't, never even learned how to play a scale or anything or anything. Yeah. Um, that that's what made me, but I still want to be expressive. That made me use a tremolo arm, which gave me the whole thing, you know, to work with for a long time. And um, I, I, I hear sound, and I, I can't help but I like hearing. I like I don't know. I get off on just hearing uh, just the, the subtlety. Not, I can't even describe it properly, but you know the difference between hearing chord one way or the other way, you know, yeah. all yeah. that kind of shit. Yeah. And that in that respect, you know, I mean. 
probably more, I, I think, I know I can in fact, because I've, I've done this, more so than guys who are really flashy, I can play like the, the apps turn right down and then suddenly play and it's turned up, you know, where they yeah. can't quite do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I keep I control, you know, yeah. but in that way I can play. You know, yeah. and I, in that respect I feel, because when I'm in the music shops and get these guys and the guy works in the shop and it, when he, when he strums a good guitar, I think it's so musical the way he's doing that. It's like, gang, 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 yeah. And yeah. Yeah. What, what else is there? Yeah. Yeah. Tips about him, so. Yeah, that's a Thanks for, guy, you know. thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thank you very much. So